So we Rishi. shall now go on to our second speaker, Dr. Rishi Swaroop. We all know he's one dynamic, versatile surgeon and a medical director and chief surgeon of Swaroop Eye Center, Hyderabad. He's the honorary secretary of HOA and editor proceedings of Telangana State Ophthalmic Society. He has impressive awards to his attributes and distinguished orations. We look forward to hearing you, Dr. Rishi, your pearls on CXL algorithms in keratoconus. On to you, Dr. Rishi. Thank you, Dr. Chitra, for involving me, involve me in this um, uh, ARC webinar of Keratoconus. It's a wonderful set of faculty, and I'm, it's a privilege to be part of this. So my topic is collagen cross-linking protocols, and uh, I'll try and do justice to it in about 10 minutes. So as we know, uh, after phaco emulsification, cross-linking is the next thing we got from dentists. They use UV light routinely to fix uh, dental fillings. When we're doing cross-linking, there are basically three things that are working together. UVA light at 365 nanometers, uh, riboflavin, which is the chemical which goes into the cornea, and then oxygen. These three together result in the effect of cross-linking. Typically, we would do it for progressive ectasias. That is a traditional indication. But nowadays, we are doing it as a primary treatment for cases that we know are going to progress rapidly or are highly likely to progress, like young patients, pediatric patients, and uh, females who are likely to conceive soon. Uh, post lasik ectasia also, we know that it uh, progresses rapidly. So these may also be an indication to do a primary cross-linking. Other uh, less common indications are peripheral ectasias, uh, microbial keratitis. Um, to prevent ectasia in borderline uh, LASIK and PRK, or uh, even smile, and of course, bullous keratopathy has also been, but all of these are questionable indications to some extent, not fully proven. So like I mentioned, everybody talked about UVA and riboflavin, but the other unknown factor which really makes a difference in the outcome is oxygen. And that is why many uh, different protocols of uh, collagen cross-linking are there and many of them are not really so effective. The standard conventional protocol, of course, is the Dresden protocol. Uh, but then there's so many terms out there and it's important to be able to navigate through these different names and understand what each of them means. So the uh, cross -link, conventional cross-linking is the Dresden protocol. We all know about it. Uh, so for about 30 minutes, you're soaking the cornea in 0.1 uh, riboflavin. And, um, and then you, after that, for about 30 minutes, you irradiate the cornea, uh, epithelium off. Traditionally, it is used uh, a fluence of three milliwatt three milliwatts per centimeter square, um, and the original uh, riboflavin contains dextran, but nowadays we are using riboflavin with HPMC. This has uh, been proven beyond doubt to be very effective in definitely arresting keratoconus and even reversing in some ex uh, some extent. <coughs> there uh, could the others please uh, mute. So there has also been a concept of uh, the bunsen rolsko law of reciprocity, reciprocity in which the uh, concept is that as long as you're maintaining the energy level at 5.4 joules per centimeter square, even if you reduce the uh, duration and increase the fluence, it should be equally effective. And uh, so people have tried an accelerated protocol of you know 18 milliwatts at five uh, minutes and 30 milliwatts at three minutes and nine milliwatts at 10 minutes. Um, initial studies were showing some um, good results, but finally we have come to realize that the accelerated protocols uh, don't really work as well. And this beautiful paper by Afezi et al in IOVS shows very clearly that nothing beats the resident protocol. However, uh, for adult cross uh, keratoconus, which is known to progress slowly, uh, and in the interest of saving some time and discomfort of the patient, a, a good balance would be to go up till the nine milliwatt or 10 minute protocol. But beyond that, 18 and 30 to a large extent have been giving, given up. Uh, in cases that we know that are going to progress rapidly or uh, are more aggressive, it's better to stick to the resident protocol, which is three milliwatts for 30 minutes. Uh, I think this lovely paper by the Naranetrale group has clearly demonstrated that even in their study, the demarcation line was best in the uh, three milliwatt and the nine milliwatt groups. So um, Kimionis et al. use a slightly modified uh, proto accelerated protocol in which they've increased the uh, energy from 5.4 to 7.5 joules per centimeter square by using 18 milliwatts for seven minutes. And they have shown that it works equally well. So 
if you're doing an accelerated protocol it may be worthwhile thinking of going for a higher overall energy uh, epithelium on cross linking also has been explored uh, or which is also called trans epithelial cross linking but um, by using certain additives in the riboflavin which help to uh, increase the penetration uh, of course this increases duration because you have to instill the drops for longer the problem with this procedure is that the riboflavin will go inside the uv will go inside through the epithelium but oxygen doesn't really go through epithelium very well epithelium consumes 10 times the amount of oxygen as the stroma and that is the same reason other techniques like iontophoresis which also uh, is a specialized way of transferring uh, uh, the riboflavin across the epithelium uh, even though the riboflavin goes in the efficacy is not as good as epi of cross linking and this is just a slide to show the same thing that oxygen doesn't go through epithelium intact epithelium as well so what all can one do for a thin cornea uh, various things have been tried hypotonic riboflavin was something people were trying earlier but the problem with hypotonic riboflavin is it swells the cornea for a very short duration so it swells up and then again comes down so you have to keep putting it again and again and there is a lot of fluctuation so at some time your irradiation may be very superficial and sometime it may go too deep so largely this has been given up uh, dr susan has shown contact lens assisted cross linking and it does definitely show some efficacy but again the problem with this is oxygen permeation through the contact lens may not be as good similarly one could use a lenticular tissue like a smile lenticule on top of the cornea uh, some people we used to leave a little island of epithelium at the thinnest zone like uh, at the thinnest zone like is shown in this picture and uh, recently dr farhad afezi uh, have uh, shown very good results with reducing the overall duration of uv exposure Uh, so basically reducing the total energy delivered and uh, he has shown that in thinner corneas if you do this you can get a more superficial demarcation line and uh, it may be thin, uh, effective even for sub 300 micron uh, cornea so uh, but this data exact data is still awaited because um, he wants to disclose the parameters only after it's published uh so i told you about hypotonic so he, it uses 0.1 riboflavin along with sodium chloride and uh, because of this 0.9% sodium chloride and because of this the cornea tends to swell swell up uh, but efficacy is very short like i mentioned <coughs> contact lens associated, associated cross linking uh, essentially you soak the contact lens as well as the cornea for about 30 minutes and then place a specialized contact lens which is not uv blocking on the top of the cornea and irradiate uh, it does work but not as well like i said a lot of people are combining uh, eczema laser along with cross linking uh, the pioneer is canalopolis and um, he uh, initially they started out doing cross um, eczema surface ablation after uh, a cross linking had worked but uh, that kind of negates the effect of the cross linking so then they came out with the athens protocol in which it was done simultaneously uh, or sequentially prk followed by cross linking um, rational being that uh, uh, it regularizes the cornea and one is not trying to remove the refractive error here one is only trying to regularize the cornea to improve the uncorrected and the best corrected vision uh, spectacle corrected vision uh, one of the things which is controversial here is the use of mitomycin uh, some people like to use mitomycin for surface ablation but some studies have shown that mitomycin actually increases the haze when it's combined with cross linking so uh, it's questionable and a lot of us are not using mitomycin when we're doing combined uh, this thing but the verdict is still out there Uh, so this is the protocol uh, uh, which uh, canalopolis group follows it's called the athens protocol in uh, important thing to remember is at the end of your ablation you should not uh, leave a bed of less than 400 microns and uh, it's an accelerated protocol after that uh, after soaking the cornea for about 5 minutes in riboflavin of course a topography guided ablation is done and i think his group is using the allegretto or the paper say customized cross linking is something again theo sales group has shown uh, uh, with the newer machines they do three zones of uh, cross linking a slightly wider a smaller zone at just the apex of the cone and then a middle zone and an outer zone so ultimately the apex is receiving a lot more fluence compared to the peripheral part of the cone and that way the apex is flattened more and they have shown a good refractive uh, stabilize i mean the uh, corneal shape stab stabilization and more focused flattening at the uh, steeper areas uh, and a, a variable kind of a demarcation line not a not a flat demarcation line as would be expected with the conventional style of cross linking so one zone like this another zone after that and then a larger zone after that 
will kind of flatten the whole cornea quite well. So that's about protocols. As you have different protocols, you have different types of riboflavins. If you see the list, it gets very confusing. Different concentration, different additives. Luckily for us in India, we have only two or three types which are available. So I'll just talk about those. Isotonic is the most commonly one, which has dextran. These are all 0.1 percent. Only 0.1 percent is available in India. Uh, but the problem with dextran is it thins the cornea a little bit. So if you have like a borderline cornea, it will become too thin, and then you might end up doing a deeper uh, cross-linking than you like. Um, if you have it, uh, not much. Uh, so this is probably the ideal riboflavin to use, especially in borderline thickness corneas. And if uh, the 0.9 percent sodium chloride one is only come used when you are combining it with a ablation procedure, basically when Bowman's is not there. So either with uh, uh, LASIK extra or CXL extra or uh, Smile extra, this could be the one to be used. But uh, again, the use is questionable. Uh, so if your PACI is very good, you could just go with the standard uh, dextran uh, riboflavin. It works well and it's much cheaper, freely available. Even one of the Indian companies is providing it. And if your PACI is borderline, I would suggest that you go with the HPMC riboflavin. Uh, this is a slide I borrowed from Dr. Farad Afezi. It's really nice because it shows all the different types and protocols and ways in which cross-linking has been used. And uh, one must really look at the evidence and the blue boxes are the ones which really have good evidence and everything else is just, you know, out there and we really don't know if it works and we sh probably shouldn't be offering it proactively. So to conclude, cross-linking uh, is definitely an effective procedure uh, and longer durations are more effective. So the accelerated protocols don't work as well. Choose the procedure wisely, depending on the current evidence and the patient status. Uh, standard cross-linking is still the most effective protocol preferred in rapidly progressive ectasia. Stabilization is the goal, but flattening does happen sometimes and it's a bonus. Sometimes it can be counterproductive also. Thank you.